What's up everybody? This is going to be a video about some things that I have been wanting to address for a minute now and it's essentially about some little pet peeves or some things that I see that um, I feel like is, how, how should I put it? I guess you can say some tips and tricks or some do's and don'ts that I don't like or that I suggest that MUAs should do but they're just little pet peeves that I don't like that I see um, MUAs practicing on a regular basis that they shouldn't be doing or they should be doing in the correct way. So I just wanted to, you know, name these things or, you know, address or talk about these things for a little brief minute about some things that I see that I don't particularly care for that I think MUAs should or should not do. Um, just to keep my thoughts together, I decided to go ahead and just name a couple of them. So this video is not going to be very long. But honey, when I see some things, they just kind of grinds my gear. So I just have to speak on it, okay? Um, when it comes to being a practicing MUA, there's a difference between a practicing MUA and a licensed MUA. Um, I actually went to school to become a licensed MUA. So not only am I a practicing M M MUA, I'm a licensed one. Then you have MUAs who are not formally trained and they're out there doing makeup, but they're not practicing proper procedure or protocol when it comes to doing certain things so I just wanted to you know name these few things that kind of that I kind of observe um, one thing that I like to do personally as an MUA when I set an appointment or you know account uh, a date for a makeup session with a client is after I book the service um, I like to basically address or go over a couple of things that you know the client may be looking for especially if it's a special occasion a birthday or an event of of some nature so i like to do a consultation with the clients first to find out you know what what are their likes and dislikes or what type of look that they're going for so i like to pretty much address those things after i book the session and i'm meeting with the client for the first time some muas they just do whatever you know and i don't feel like that's appropriate when you know the makeup should fit the occasion you know so I'm one of those types to where I like to have a consultation with the client either on the phone or after I book the appointment and then I show up for their appointment um, the second thing that I like to do is set up 30 minutes to an hour before a service so I like to arrive at least an hour early in advance so that it will give me ample time to set up um, if it's if I have to go to a location or a shoot of some sort um, if it's a client's home or I'm coming to them then yes, I, I would like to have, you know, a proper amount of time to be able to show up early so that I'll be able to, you know, set up my tools properly and lay everything out so that I can get started and go right into my job. Um, another thing that I notice MUAs do, I don't know, I can't speak for all of them, but this is something that's very important to me because I don't know, maybe it's just the Virgo in me because I, I do happen to be a Virgo and we're known to be OCD about certain things, especially when it comes to order or cleanliness um, I'm big on sanitation when it comes to you know doing makeup or even in nail care because I also happen to be a licensed nail technician um, some people may address that or, or ask me you know well I don't see any nail related content on your channel um, I'm getting to that and you will see some of my you know work soon uh, meanwhile you can go over to my old channel which is princess 2969 and check out some of my work on there um, but one thing that I'm big on, whether I'm, you know, servicing a client's nails or I'm doing their makeup is sanitation. I'm going to repeat that again. Sanitation. That's very important to me. I don't even get started on the client until I know all my tools are properly sanitized. My brushes are clean and sanitized and everything is just ready and set to go, you know. So one of the things that I like to do with my clients is to actually cleanse their skin um, with some type of skin skin cleaning agent but for those if you know if especially if I don't know what their skin type is which is something that I usually cover in their consultation before I do their makeup because I need to know if they're sensitive to certain products to their skin or if you know they're allergic to certain um, products or makeup items and stuff so I like to cleanse my clients um, face with 
at least a makeup remover wipe before I get started so that I can wipe all the impurities from their face before I get started. I also like to do a slight moisturizing agent of some sort on their skin, whether they're oily or not, I like to do that because nine, nine times out of 10, it makes for a smoother application. Um, so cleansing the face is very important to me before I get started on any job because I don't care for putting makeup on a dirty face. Not to say that my clients are dirty per se, but just for sanitation purposes so that their makeup come out flawless, I would rather cleanse their skin with some type of um, makeup removing cloth or some, some type of um, gentle cleansing agent. Um, another thing that I'm very big on is before I even touch them, I sanitize my hands first, okay? Um, whether I use some type of um, sanitizing gel that I keep in my kit or, you know, I cleanse my hands with alcohol of some sort or wash my hands with regular soap and water. Sanitation is very important to me. Again, I stress this. You have to make sure your tools are clean, your hands are clean, your client's face is a clean slate for makeup applications so their makeup go on flawlessly and they don't have any allergic reactions or any type of reactions to any products that you use on their face. Or it could be, you know, from hand to face type of um, contact. Excuse me. So I ensure, I try to ensure that, you know, I take great care to make sure everything is clean, including my hands. Sometimes I see MUAs that don't do that. And that really bothers me because I'm like, you know, this client don't know where you may have came from before her, before you came to her for your job. Why would you want to touch her face and your hands are not clean? You know, she don't know where you've been, you know, <laughs> not saying, you know, that all MUAs are unsanitary, but just for safe purposes, you know, you just want to make sure your hands are clean. So that's something that I'm very big on besides cleansing my tools and my client's face. Um, Another pet peeve of mine that I see a lot of MUAs doing that I don't care for that just drives me nuts is when they're transferring products directly from tubes and containers straight to the client's face. That's a big no-no. I don't know why some do that, but that's not cool. And I feel like they need to pay attention to things like that and don't do that. So if I'm working with something like, say... Uh, let's say like maybe a foundation stick, you know, if I'm not using a liquid, you know, foundation, I like to um, take the stick and take a little tool of some sort that looks something like a cuticle pusher or maybe even one of those metal um, shaped um, instruments that has like, it looks like a scalpel on the end with a flat surface or a spoon. And I like to just, you know, especially if I don't have it already, you know, put in a pan of some sort. If I take it directly from a stick, I like to take off, you know, some of that product from the stick with a clean sanitizing, um, sanitized tool to where I can take, remove some of that product and put it on the back of my hand, which is clean. Or an old trick that I like to do is you either use a makeup palette that's, you know, specifically designed for that type of thing to transfer um, product from an item like a container or something to a person's skin. Or what I like to do is use a regular music CD believe it or not it's just a regular you know cd disc it's easily sanitizable you can spritz it with alcohol or some type of sanitizing agent and wipe it down and it's clean and as good as new so sometimes if i don't have my makeup tray in my kit i'll just take a regular music cd and just use that to transfer product onto that and then i pick up product from the cd and apply it to the client's face and then after everything is said and done, I can just clean that off and, you know, put it back in my kit. And, you know, my regular tube or my regular product is sanitation, you know, like sanitized or is clean. So that's something that, you know, really kind of irritates me when I see MUAs using product directly from a container or a bottle. And they're, you know, putting it directly on the client's skin, especially if it's applicators of some sort. With lipstick applicators and lipsticks, I usually like to depot them and put those in pans. Or if I take anything directly from a lipstick product of some sort, um, like let's say for instance, I grab something like this. This is just a NYX lip gloss. And this, matter of fact, this is one of my favorites. This is Mauve. Instead of taking it and using the Dolpha applicator and putting it directly on the client's skin, which is, well, well, their lips, which is very unsanitary because you're using this product from client to client, so you don't want to do that. I just take some product, either put it on the back of my hand like this, and then I can use a lip brush to, you know, pick up the product from my back of my hand, 
or from the CD that I use or a makeup tray that you can put the product on like this and then transfer it from the brush to the client's skin. Um, same thing with mascara. I have like um, either, you know, multiple ones like this that I can sanitize after I use them or you can get the disposable, the, the, the disposable mascara ones like this and you can dip them into um, the mascara product or just take and, and put it on the back of your hand or on a flat makeup um, surface or a makeup tray or a plain CD, like I said, that's what I use. And then I can just take the brush and you know go through the product like that and then just put it on the eyes. After I'm finished using this, if it's one of these types, I can sanitize these and soak these in some type of makeup cleansing solution and then you know store and put them away. If they're disposable mascaras, that's even better. Um, I don't go back and double dip. That's another no-no. Don't ever go back into an original product, even with a disposable tool or wand, and double dip or go back in there. Pick up enough product on the brush one time. That should be enough for you to cover both lashes. If you need to get more product out of that container or that tube, then you use another disposable mascara wand, or you clean this one off. If you have more than one, then you use another one, go back into the tube, um, and you can put it on the back of the hand or whatever and you know do your lashes that way So it's just very important that you don't contaminate your products using those products from person to person With the same tools that you don't sanitize So that's another pet peeve of mine that I see some makeup artists doing and it's just not cool at all And it's not sanitary period. Okay um, Which leads to another thing. I keep a lot of disposable applicators in my makeup kit they could be um, makeup sponges um, that are disposable. Some are washable, you know, like the latex sponges or, you know, like true sponges. Um, you can also use disposable mascara wands. They usually come in a pack. You can buy those in bulk from your local beauty supply store or a specialty esthetician, you know, supply outlet of some sort. Um, even, um, what is that? Disposable applicators. Um... <laughs> Even when it comes to Q-tips, when I want to clean up a little job, these are handy too. I keep a bunch of these in my makeup kit. I just get a pack of these. I usually get the little round um, containers, plastic containers that's about yay high, about this big or round from Family Dollar that are full of these. And I keep those in my makeup kit. These are perfect for cleaning up like mascara. <laughs> I'm flipping stuff. Mascara up underneath the lash line here or you know just to clean up around the eyes or whatever or just clean up around the lips these are perfect for that so just make sure you keep for and i'm speaking for MUAs or even practicing MUAs. make sure you keep a lot of disposable makeup applicators of all sorts in your kit that way you can you know lower the risk of contamination or even you know um, contaminating your products that you use on clients um, lipstick application, this is another pet peeve of mine, which I just demonstrated, you know, just transferring product on the back of the hand and then from here you can, you know, keep applying product. Just make sure you put enough product on the back of your hand, which is clean and sanitized or a makeup tray or even a blank CD, like I said, and you can pick up a dispose, you can pick up the makeup product with a disposable applicator of some sort or even um, disposable Dolpha applicators that you can pick up the product with from here to apply to the client's lips. I cannot stand to see MUAs take a make a lipstick product or a lip product and use that product, especially if it's lipstick, and apply it directly to a client's lips. However, if you don't do any of the things that I suggested, the one main thing that I suggest that MUAs do if they use make um, a lip product directly from a tube or a lipstick, lip gloss I wouldn't recommend that for. But for lipsticks, I would recommend that if you have to apply this lipstick product directly to a client's lips, make sure you sanitize the lipstick product. Okay? You can use... I believe is 90% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, that'll do the trick. Um, it'll also clean your makeup um, brush applicators and things of that sort. Just make sure you use an isopropyl alcohol that's at least 90% strength of some sort, somewhere up in there. 50% is good, but it won't be as strong as something that is 
80 and 90 percent isopropyl alcohol or higher to um, kill the germs or the contaminants that could be on the lip product if you apply this directly to a client's lips so yeah and then another product that i had mentioned before in a previous video that you can use in order to sanitize your makeup is beauty so clean which is excellent and i recommend that all makeup artists use this product it's just it's the bomb you you have to use this it's specifically formulated um to sanitize lipsticks lip glosses the dolph applicator especially if you wipe it off and you sanitize it with this it won't harm anything or you can sanitize this um, for your lipsticks. Um, I also happen to have some of the, and I think I showed this in the previous video also, because these are also avail available in the spray form as well as these packs right here, Beauty So Clean. And these are specifically um, created or formulated to, because um, it says right here on the, package um, lipsticks glosses cosmetic pencils and things of that nature they're just like little gauzes that's like you know pre-moistened with the sanitizing mist or the or formula that comes in here you can wipe your um, lip pencils off with this as well as your lipsticks and your glosses the only thing I suggest is before you stick this Dofa applicator or any tip applicator like this from a gloss or lip product of this nature back into the tube Make sure you wipe this down first with this. Please do that because all you're going to do is whatever you put on a client's lips, you're going to put it right back into the tube and contaminate the whole tube. So this is good for that. If you can't get Beauty So Clean, which is easily accessible, you can get it from their website, which is beautysoclean.com. Um, you can use alcohol to sanitize your lip products and clean them down so you won't run any risk of any type of de decontamination or you know spreading any type of infection of some sort from one client to the next so those are some of the things that i wanted to address um i had put them in my phone so i can make some little mental notes and stuff but this is something that i strongly suggest to all muas that they practice on a regular basis just for your protection as well as your client's protection so that's something that you want to do to ensure you know your clients are happy and they're pleased with your work and they can have complete confidence in what it is that you do knowing that you have their best interests at heart when you're practicing sanitation techniques and you're, you're practicing techniques that you know will protect yourself as well as your clients so that concludes my video i just wanted to put that out there for you know practicing and licensed muas that are doing their things i may do this for another segment for nail techs or you know practicing nail technicians because I see a lot of things that don't that are faux pas here or on YouTube alone that just kind of really irritates me, but <laughs> we'll save that for another video, okay? So I just wanted to address those things with you guys, and I will be back soon to check in with you guys later. So I hope you take care and ha have a happy holiday, a safe holiday with your family, friends, and loved ones, and you guys be blessed, okay? I love you all, my superstars. Take care. Love, peace, and happiness. Bye. Mwah.